Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Class in 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, January the 12th, 2013. Our topic today is using iPads to enhance teaching and learning, and our special guest today is Joe Dale. For those of you who are new, or just a reminder to some of you who have been with us for a while, that we have a terrific resource that it's called the Live Binder, and today is Joe Dale's. And Peggy's been telling a few people in the chat that this is one of the best resources you're ever going to find for working with iPads, but also to help you, help you work through Joe's presentation. He has a great deal to share with us today, so that not to worry about writing anything down, you can go back to the live binder to pick up anything that you missed during the show. Besides the Live Binder, we do have a website, live.class20.com, and we always point you to the Archives and Resources page because a recording of today's session is also on here in the, as a Blackboard Collaborate recording. We have the audio file, we have a uh, chat log for you, and then we have an embedded movie file that you can use somewhere else, um, share it in a professional development with anyone else that you wish to do so. It is located in this page. Peggy faithfully fills out a blog post. So not only do you find a link to the Live Binder and all those resources, but you'll also find the links that are shared in the Live Binder. So if you only get yourself to the blog, you can get a lot of information there as well. So you'll find contact information and uh, the details for you to work through. So I said a few minutes ago that I'm going to get you working. So this is the opportunity for you to go to the whiteboard tools on the left of the screen. And the second item down is the laser pointer. If you wouldn't mind clicking on the laser pointer there and dragging yourself across the map. I know Joe is in England. And as usual, Shambles is on the other side of the world to me in Thailand. People in Canada, United States. And if you can't make that laser pointer, please go right ahead and just type it in the chat for us. Okay, let's just move on to the poll questions because these questions help um, Joe get a sense of the audience. So we're going to ask you to use that polling option just under your name on the right hand side. And the first question today is do you use iPads in your classroom with students? So yes, if you do, no, if you don't. And I'll wait for people to vote. If you can't get the voting option to go, just please go type that in the chat just to give Joe an idea. So we've got a, a full class today, Joe, for you. We've got about 78 people here, and I'm just waiting for people to vote. So I can I'm going to stop and publish results for no, I'm not. OK, someone else do that for me, because something odd is happening on my end. Could be user, there we go. Could be user generated. Maybe not. That took a while for it to pop up on my screen. I'm going to try not to take too much more time. But um, you've pretty much split those people who haven't had a chance to answer in uh, 23 to 32 um, who do. Let's move on to the next poll question. If you use iPads with students in your classroom, do you use iPads as one-to-one? -one? Does every student have one? So yes, if you do. No, if you don't. Just waiting for people to vote. If you just entered the session, the voting options are just below your name on the right-hand side. If you see the check mark, click on it. You get the drop down menu to make your yes or no response. So far, I've only got about 30 people voting. OK, let's see what they had to say. And it's not working today. So Kim, please publish your results to the whiteboard for me. Thank you. There. That's interesting. I keep on. Our results are showing us that um, not as many people are able to do that or are doing that in the classroom. So I'm just going to clear the votes and go to the next poll question. 
and that is if you use iPads with students in your class, do you use them as single iPads for multiple people? So that's, do you have single iPads for multiple people? Yes, if you do, no, if you don't. So I'm seeing a little slowness here for the votes as well. I think, Joe, you've got a sense of the people today. I don't see the votes coming up clearly. There we go. Most people are um, waiting to see the presentation, and uh, they'll let us know in the, in the chat a little later what their classroom situation is like. So let's move on to question number four. Are you a one iPad classroom? So if we could ask that question. Yes, if you do, no, if you don't. Give some more answers for that. Are you a one iPad classroom? Kim, do you want to publish the votes down? We have a fair number here who voted. So most people are not. Only a few people have the luxury of uh, using the iPad. Sorry. I'm sorry. I can't move the whiteboard. Slides I'm good on. So let's get started on the session because I'm wasting valuable air time. Joe, please forgive me for that kind of an odd um, review of the poll questions for you. But this is, uh, again, our opportunity to welcome you today to our sessions. And then for those of you who don't know Joe, he's an independent modern foreign language and technology consultant from the Isle of Wight in the UK. He's been speaking at conference and virtual conferences since 2006 and works with major language associations in the UK and international. And I know Peggy probably is going to share this for you in the chat. He's the host of the TES, TES MFL forum and the MFL portal manager for the Open University's Vital Program. And uh, Peggy, are you dropping those links in the chat for everyone? Joe will be sharing his most recent research on iPads and his experience and knowledge about using iPads to enhance teaching and learning. And as I said to you a few minutes ago, please don't worry about the content that's going on here today, that you'll get the live binder and the blog post to help you through. Because I'm going to now turn the session over to Joe and ask him if he wouldn't mind helping us out with a newbie question, which is, what does research tell us about the effective use of iPads and mobile devices for teaching and learning? So welcome, Joe. I'd like you to take the microphone. And you're welcome to, right after that an answer to your question, take over in the presentation. So thanks very much. You're absolutely welcome, Lorna. Thank you so much for inviting me uh, onto the Classroom 2.0 live uh, session. I've been a delegate quite a few times in, 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 uh, in these, but uh, this is the first time I've actually led a session, so I'm very, very flattered to be asked. Uh, and obviously today we're looking at iPads. Um, uh, just to uh, sort of give you a little bit of background, I, I taught for 13 years uh, teaching French, so my background is uh, modern foreign languages, uh, but the presentation today I've made sure that uh, it is um, uh, generic across across the curriculum. So there will be a couple of examples of uh, how iPads are being used in languages, but basically most of the presentation um, will be applicable um, at primary, secondary, across the curriculum. So. Um, uh, just to answer the, uh, the newbie question, as it were, what does research tell us about the effective use of iPads and mobile devices for teaching and learning? Well, uh, one of the uh, slides I'm going to be mentioning um, later on is, uh, well, a couple of slides, in fact, are to do with research on the use of iPads. The one I particularly wanted to highlight was um, the one from uh, Hull University, which is the most recent uh, piece of research, the biggest piece of research I'm aware of in the UK on use of iPads. And um, what they found, um, that they had um, uh, devices uh, going around Scottish schools, uh, primary schools, and secondary, school, secondary schools. And one of the key findings that they found was the most effective learning uh, was when the students owned their own devices. So I know that financially, uh, that has a, you know, there's a big consideration there. But they found from their research that it's great having an iPad with multiple users, but the, the, the best learning 
was when um, individual children had their own iPads that they took them home, brought them back in, and they could customize them in the way they wanted to, because really an iPad is designed to be a personal device um, to put the learning right in, in the student's hands. So that's, that was one point I wanted to pick up on the research, but there's lots of other things to, to talk about. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, here we go. Right, okay, so my, uh, my blog uh, is here, joedale.typepad.com. Uh, I've been writing my blog since 2006, so, um, so three years of which I was in the classroom, and I've just carried on the blog. I've not blogged as much as I would, would have liked to recently, but it was a very extensive um, blog post that I published uh, just uh, recently, uh, last week, I remember correctly, uh, to do with a, a podcast that I did with the uh, EduTalk show, which is a, a podcast run by two Scottish educators, David Noble and John Johnson. And in that, I talk a lot about um, uh, a, tw a Twitter community called the MFL Twitterati, which is a community of language teachers on Twitter from the UK. And I also talk about mobile devices and iPads. So you, if you have a look at my blog, you'll find that's the latest uh, post there. And then underneath that is my email address, joedell.talk21.com. Uh, if there's anything you want to email me uh, about what I'm going to be talking about today, that's uh, no problem at all. Uh, teachers email me all the time, and I, I would love to hear from you. I'm actually delighted that Peggy has taken all this time to put together the, the live binder. Uh, and uh, as has been said already by Lorna, you don't have to take any notes at all if you don't want to. Uh, it's, it's all in the live binder. And if you get uh, stuck with anything, then just uh, email me or send me a tweet at, uh, at Joe Dale. So just Joe Dale, at Joe Dale for uh, Twitter. OK, we've got lots of things to get through. We've got about 50 slides. It's about one slide per minute. Here we go. OK, so we know that uh, young people's uh, habits are changing. Uh, there was an article in The Telegraph in uh, February of last year saying that uh, there's been a poll on teenagers uh, prefer social media to TV. So the habits that teenagers have nowadays are very, very different from maybe when we were growing up. And we very much need to consider that and reflect that in what we do in the classroom. So that's the image on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is a, um, uh, an infographic, uh, which I found uh, recently, uh, which is by uh, Jason Rode. And uh, that indicates uh, the fact that students are very much like social media, that the way that the internet is, is going is that we're um, accessing it much, much more on mobile devices as opposed to on a PC. So as you can see on the left, you've got a picture of, of a lad with his laptop but certainly iPads and other mobile devices are very much where things are at the moment and where, th where things are going. And it's not going to change, not in the next few years anyway. You'll also, you'll also notice that underneath each of the um, uh, slides that I've got uh, links to uh, the references that I'm making. So you'll be able to uh, access those in your own time, which is, uh, which is great. Also via the live binder as well. OK. Right, this uh, literally came up yesterday in my Twitter feed. This was created by um, Laura Knight, who is uh, the director of e-learning at uh, Berkhamsted School in Hertfordshire. And she's also head of uh, the languages department. And this is very much a, a work in progress. These, these are her words, you know, that, that she just um, has put together this graph where she's suggesting where she feels uh, how teach most teachers are using technology at the moment. So you can see that you know, the innovators are very much using mobile learning in the classroom. She's actually lucky enough to have two sets of iPads just for the languages department, which is wonderful. And um, so she's saying you know, the, the innovators are using mobile learning. Uh, and then after that, the early adopters, early majority using Web 2.0, uh, sort of the majority, the middle uh, section, people using interactive whiteboards, maybe people who are more uh, reluctant to use technology, are, are happy with their PowerPoint presentation, and then the people that really <laughs> aren't very techno savvy at all uh, are word processing. So I think that's a nice sort of bell curve, as it were, to give an indication of maybe where we are at the moment with how teachers are using technology in the classroom. OK, this is a very similar uh, graphic in a way and refers to what I was just talking about, about, about the way that the uh, uh, people are using the internet now. So it's suggesting that in this graph that by sort of next year, the year after, uh, that um, uh, the number of people accessing the internet via mobile devices will, be, uh, will actually exceed the number accessing it by uh, PCs. I don't know if you agree with that or, or not, but that's, that was something that I found based on research by Morgan Stanley. So I think that's very interesting. So that certainly seems to be the way uh, that, that, that things are going at the moment. 
Okay, so let's now concentrate more on the iPad. So uh, normally, if you'd want to um, uh, have a bit of you know kit in your classroom for doing things like I don't know digital storytelling or podcasting. Or, or, or what have you, then you would need a computer. You'd need um, uh, maybe a flip camera or a, a USB microphone or uh, a digital camera or a webcam or whatever. But with the iPad, it's all in one device. It's modal. It's, it's multi-modal uh, learning, uh, and that's absolutely fantastic. So uh, with the iPad, you've got it all there. You've got the inbuilt uh, camera. You've got the uh, you, you've got the opportunity of creating video immediately, straight away, without having to think about it. You can record audio, you can edit audio, you can do all these different things we're going to talk about in the next 50 minutes or so. Uh, so it really is a multimodal device, putting the learning into the hands of the, uh, of the students. OK, so this slide, this is uh, taken from the Guardian Teacher Network blog. Uh, and it was written uh, in August of 2012. And I thought it was quite a nice uh, article to do with, uh, you know, are we ready? Are, are our classrooms iPad ready, as it were? And this is written by a primary language, uh, sorry, a primary teacher uh, from the UK, who um, came up with some sort of pros and cons for uh, the use of the iPad uh, in in the classroom. Uh, so some of the pros here are things like you know ease and speed of use and accessibility. As I've mentioned already, we don't need to you know get a digital camera. We don't need to um, get a microphone. It's all there in the students' hands. Uh, you've got a fantastic uh, access to audiovisual tools, all these different apps we're going to look at in a moment. You can create um, books, you can create ebooks very, very easily using various apps. You can also consume content via um, books. And certainly creativity, I think um, the iPad is absolutely amazing for creativity. And very much the onus, in my opinion, should be on how we can use the iPad to create content rather than just consuming content. Some people, I think, see the iPad as a, as, a, as a device for consuming content, but in fact, what we should be doing is, is using it to produce content. So we should be more prosumers rather than just consumers. And then the sorts of uh, disadvantages that he's mentioned, things like, yes, it doesn't run uh, Adobe Flash. We've known that for a long time. Uh, you can't multitask on an iPad as you can, let's say, on a PC. But some people could argue that, actually, that's much better from the learning point of view because it means that the students can really concentrate on one thing at a time. Uh, if you, um, uh, if you uh, facilitate guided access as well, which I'm going to be talking about later on, then uh, that's certainly a way of making sure that you, you just concentrate on one task. And for things like word processing, I would, I would actually agree with this. I would argue that it is a disadvantage maybe to to write at length on the iPad. That's not something I would do personally, I think. I think for things like um, for writing short bits of text, it's absolutely fine. But if I was going to write an essay, I probably wouldn't do it on the iPad. I would probably do it on a, on a PC or, or a Mac or whatever. So in other words, you've got to think of the right tool for the right job. So that is something I actually agree with. But for the other, the other things, I think that uh, uh, you can, uh, well, uh, it wouldn't stop me from using an iPad, certainly. So I think that's useful. Also, you'll notice there's a second link at the bottom here. Um, and uh, this is from the iPad Educators uh, Ning site. And this is sort of uh, 10 steps on um, making, sh making sure that your iPad integration is successful in the classroom. So I've included that link as well, which you can uh, check out in your own time. OK, so now we're going to look at a few models. And I'm going to uh, say how I think these relate to uh, the use of iPads uh, in the classroom. So TPAC. Uh, this is something I only became aware of when I went to Australia for uh, seven weeks um, in March to May time earlier on this year. And uh, this was uh, designed by Mishra and Kula. I was actually at the, at the same conference, the 21st Century Learning Conference in Hong Kong in February uh, with um, uh, Sunya Mishra. Uh, so I was, I was lucky enough to hear him speak. But uh, one of uh, the, the key bits of research that he's done in the last few years is this TPAC model, the idea that uh, the best learning in the classroom happens when you have this um, uh, synergy between uh, technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge. And so that sweet spot right in the middle uh, is where you get this sort of, you know, this TPAC model uh, being the most effective. And then the, the dotted line, the circle around um, the, uh, the diagram is supposed, supposed to represent context. So I think that's a very useful uh, start to say that we can't ignore technology anymore, that really for the best learning to, 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 uh, to take place, uh, he would argue that technology is essential, which is not to say you can't have fantastic teaching uh, without, uh, um, without technology. But if you have the technology, I, I believe very strongly that it will make a good teacher into a better teacher. But it won't make a bad teacher into a good teacher. 
Okay. Right. Uh, the SAMR model has been used uh, a lot in the context of iPads. Um, so again, this is um, to do with the idea of substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. And this is actually actually referred to a lot in the Hull University research I, I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, the webinar, uh, with some fantastic quotes saying how they feel uh, the the Hull researchers feel that um, the iPad is something which is. Uh, is changing learning, is, is, if you like, transforming learning, redefining learning by the fact that, for, for example, it is possible for things uh, like making a movie using iMovie or creating a podcast, something that wouldn't be possible otherwise with one device. And so I think that's something which, which needs to be taken very seriously. Um, if those people don't know what app was used to make this uh, graphic, it was actually paper, which is something which I would really uh, recommend. It's a very good app for, um, for this sort of drawing. And again, you can see that the link has been taken from iPad King of Classroom uh, blog post. So this, the summary model uh, was uh, created by uh, Dr. Puente Jura. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see that uh, here there's a video clip uh, of him uh, talking uh, literally a couple of uh, months ago. Uh, he wasn't, uh, my understanding was he was uh, in Canada at the time and had a conference to, um, uh, to attend in Sweden, but wasn't able to uh, go there face to face, so he created a video which is a really nice sort of introduction to the SAMA model. And so that's why I've included that within this, uh, this particular slide. And then on the right hand side is uh, a presentation created by uh, Mark Anderson, who is an ICT evangelist on Twitter, uh, who's from the UK, from the southwestern UK, and has been uh, right, uh, blogging some incredible things about iPads. So again, that's a nice sort of guide to how he feels that uh, the iPad fits in with uh, the SAMA model. OK, uh, referring back to the Hull University uh, research, this is uh, taken from, I think it's page 98, if I remember correctly. Uh, this model is, um, is from the, the, the research. It relates to not only the Salmon model, but also to some research by McCormack and, and, and Skimshaw, uh, which I'm not as au fait with, I must admit. And I put this quote on the right-hand side. This is taken from the research. Um, so for those people listening on the MP3, so I believe there's going to be an MP3 version of this, I'll just read it out now. So uh, referring particularly to transformation and redefinition of the learning, the previous examples, so these are the, the examples in the research document, uh, the previous examples illustrated how the iPad has been used in some cases to extend or modify the learning task, environment or context, enabling students to learn differently and more effectively, not just more efficiently. Beyond extension lies a new level, allowing students, stu a student to do things that would not previously have been possible or even conce conceivable in the school setting. Here the technology becomes transformational or, um, uh, or, or uh, redefinable, uh, rather than simply modifying the experiences of the student or the pedagogical repertoire of the teacher. So, uh, so these people are saying that really, you know, the iPads, they're really changing, changing learning, they're redefining learning. Uh, clearly if they're used in, in an appropriate way. But I think that's very useful. Those people that are looking for evidence of, or justification of why iPads are good, then um, I would direct them towards this research. OK, um, another piece of research, Bloom's taxonomy, uh, justifying why in, um, uh, technology, or not just, sorry, not just technology, but why, uh, how we can get these students to access higher order thinking skills, or HOTS, if you like. Uh, there's been quite a lot of research about this in relation to iPads. If you, there's a really nice ebook um, uh, which is to do with uh, HOTS or HOT apps for uh, for the iPad. But this one is this this graphic has been taken uh, from the Silvia Tolosano blog, uh, globallyconnectedlearning.com. Which if you don't uh, know about Silvia or Languages on on Twitter, she's been doing some incredible stuff to do with iPads uh, in the last few years. And I'd really recommend you checking out uh, the stuff she's doing. Uh, it also mentions at the bottom here that this has been adapted from uh, Kathy Schrock's uh, Blooming iPad graphic, which I'll be showing you in the, in the next slide. But essentially, the idea of this is to show how some apps uh, she feels relates to the certain levels of um, Bloom's taxonomy. And right at the top there is the creating one, which is something which I personally would, would really recommend that you, uh, that you try and do with the iPads, that you use the iPad to create content rather than just consuming content. So those are some apps there which, uh, which will help you to uh, get your students to access, uh, access higher order thinking skills. OK, so carrying on on the same theme, 
on the right hand side here, this is a, a really nice graphic I think by uh, Kathy Schrock where again the levels of uh, Bloom's taxonomy are made absolutely, absolutely explicit but also very nicely is around the cogs are uh, examples of how you can uh, use certain technologies such as storytelling, podcasting, video casting or what have you to, uh, to enable your students to access these high order thinking skills. And then on the left hand side is an image which also relates to Bloom's taxonomy which was taken from uh, the website iPad in schools and this is a blog post about uh, students creating their own apps to enhance their learning as well and that might be something that, that some people are doing in their uh, uh, in the classroom right now, I don't know, but that's something you can imagine would be very engaging for the students. I don't know how easy it would be to, to go through, you know, the, the Apple iTunes registration process, but certainly the idea of creating apps for um, for the iPad is is something which I'm sure would be very motivational. Okay, this is a quote taken from uh, Kelda Richards, who is um, lead practitioner for media rich learning at Isca College uh, of Media Arts. She's also a head of languages in the school as well. And again, for the benefit of the MP3 player, I'll just read this out. So, the introduction of iPads has engaged and infused staff and learners. Whether teachers have access to one or 30 iPads, so I, I can appreciate from the poll that we had earlier that um, quite a few people have got just the one iPad in the classroom. Some people are lucky enough to have access to a set of iPads. Uh, they can make uh, learning multidimensional, enabling students to move uh, from effective research to improving their presentation skills and, most important of all, creating. With apps to cover every area of Bloom's taxonomy, iPads are helping to develop workplace skills. So that's a fantastic quote, I think, which reinforces um, the idea that iPads can allow students to access uh, higher order thinking skills at the top of Bloom's taxonomy. <coughs> okay, here are some more um, apps which relate to this time to Gardner's Multiple Intelligences, which I took from the iPadders.eu. And uh, again, you can, uh, if you don't know some of these apps, you can check them out. And uh, if you're looking for it, if you like justification, well, I'm just going to have a little bit of water, sorry. Uh, that's better, right, okay. So uh, if you're looking for you know, justification of why um, uh, iPads are, are good for, to enhance learning, then you could, uh, if you, you could uh, direct people towards this slide or, or this research where apps are related to in this example, Gardner's multiple intelligences. So that's another another good starting point, I think. Okay, so uh, moving back to uh, the practice in the classroom. Um, this is an article, ICT as, as a Catalyst for Change in Pedagogy, which was written by Laura Knight uh, on the right-hand side there, and uh, Mark Steed. They both work at Berkhamsted School. Uh, Mark is the head teacher there, the principal, and uh, Laura is uh, the director of e-learning and the head of languages. And um, in this article, she talks about the idea that um, she feels that the iPad or mobile devices uh, is really uh, seeing now a change in pedagogy. And we need to obviously be up to date with that, uh, that change in pedagogy. And she talks about the mighty new generation, you know, the any time, any place, anywhere generation. And that's how uh, young people of today, as I referred to earlier, you know, they expect to learn in that way. And we need to be up to, up to speed uh, as, uh, as teachers, as, as trainers on, on this. Uh, so that we can uh, best meet their needs. On the right hand side there, there's a, a YouTube clip of um, Laura uh, giving a presentation at the ISC IT conference where she talks for about 20 minutes on how she's been using iPads uh, in languages in that context and, uh, and what the students have got out of it and how thrilled she's been by their, uh, their, recept their, their receptive um, use and their productive use of the iPads. And the picture just below that, that was a training session I, I did at Berkhamsted School in January of last year, so about a year ago, uh, on, on uh, some ideas on the use of iPads, which was uh, well received. Okay. Right, this is the, um, uh, the link to the evaluation study I've, I've talked about a few times now. Uh, so it was carried out by Hull University uh, last year, and it was uh, in different primary schools and secondary schools in Scotland. And it was a, it's a really fantastic uh, read. I must say, it's about 115 pages. Um, and I read it on a couple of train journeys um, in November, uh, uh, so a couple of months ago. And it really is brilliant, um, the way that uh, they really sort of drill down into uh, the students' thoughts about the iPad, the teachers' thoughts, the parents' thoughts. And it's well worth a, a read. I think it's, it's the most comprehensive study so far I'm aware of, certainly in the UK. 
uh, and it, it, it highlights some very interesting features about the use of iPads in real context in real schools. But the most important thing in a way, which is something they highlight a lot, is they found that the, uh, one, of the, one of the findings that was the most significant was the fact that the students learned the best when, it, when they owned their own device, which is something we need to think about for the future, I think. OK, uh, prior to the uh, Scottish research, uh, uh, there was the Longfield Academy iPad uh, case study, which was carried out by NACE, which is a, a national organization to computing uh, in the UK. And this is a case study looking at um, the, the Longfield Academy on how they were using iPads. And again, very, very interesting research. Uh, I'm just going to carry on and, and uh, direct you to the sorts of findings that, that were found. Obviously, you can read this in your own time. but. Uh, Merlin John, who is a, a well-known educational consultant and, uh, and journalist, um, wrote a, a post about the, uh, the Longfield research saying that it found you know, significant and positive impact on the use of iPads. So the 54-page report also is, is well worth having a look at just to see how they got on with, with iPads and, um, and go from there. Uh, the last slide. Uh, on Longfield Academy research, I thought it was particularly interesting. Uh, it shows the students' response on the different subjects where iPads were being used. And uh, my own sort of, uh, subject, uh, MFL, non foreign languages, uh, you can see that the students are saying it was hardly used at all in that subject, which I find quite surprising because I think iPads are actually perfect. Um, uh, for enhancing language learning, but uh, possibly it could be to, to do more with the fact that maybe English, Maths and Science, there were more lessons, so maybe they were being used more as a result of that. But also, interestingly, in the Scottish research, um, they're, they're quite critical of, um, of um, this particular graph, and they say that, you know, uh, that maybe, well, that maybe it was down to the fact that they were being used more in one lesson compared to other lessons, and maybe this is a little bit skewed. But again, have a look at that in your own time. Um, but again, an interesting graphic. It might be interesting in your own schools for you to do the same thing. Just see, get, get, a, get a, a straw poll idea on uh, uh, which subjects we're using the iPads the most. OK, so in this slide, uh, this is a, a post uh, uh, written uh, last year, if I remember correctly, uh, saying, you know, 12 characteristics of, of, of your um, classroom if it's ready for iPads. Now, if you have a look at the link underneath from, from teachthought, uh, com, which I find is a very good uh, resource for um, uh, uh, posts about iPads, then you'll find a lot more detail about each one of these. But obviously, I didn't want to include every single bit of text on this one slide. I just wanted to direct you towards the information. But I think it's interesting that, that in this article, they're saying that if your, your classroom is ready for iPads, then you know, your, curriculum, your curriculum has to be adaptive, dynamic, digital. As instruction students sent to etc. Cetera, et cetera. You can see that for yourself. But if you have, if you if you drill down into the into the post, then you can uh, you can get a lot more from that. But again, I think that's an interesting article to explore in your own time. Okay, this was this post uh, relates to the idea that there was a teacher uh, from uh, Northern Ireland who had uh, been lucky enough to get a, a set of iPads, but wasn't really sure how to get the, the the most out of them. So what he did, which I thought was fantastic, was he asked on Twitter. Uh, if um, some people could give, give him some ideas on how he could uh, get the most out of uh, using iPads. He put together a Google Doc, and you can, you've got the link uh, to it underneath there, uh, and got some suggestions from his personal learning network, his PLN, on the best ways of getting um, uh, the most out of the iPads. Now, I really believe strongly that this is the way to go with this, because not certainly one person, one individual person, cannot know every single app or every single educational app on the iTunes store. We have to work together on this, and so uh, you know we're all in this together. It's collaborative learning, and using Twitter, having a personal learning network, I think is the way to go to find out the best apps uh, for the best jobs, as it were. And if you have a question about you know how, what, what's a good app for, for example, yesterday there was um, uh, Mark Anderson, ICT evangelist, was asking uh, what's a good app for um, creating infographics, and um, someone suggested uh, Visualize, which uh, I have got, which I haven't explored a lot myself recently. But uh, that was that was great, and and so when people have questions, there are lots of people out there who are willing to to help and to support, which is just wonderful. Okay, uh, now drilling down into a few more sort of technical issues, uh, something which I know uh, Laura Knight, who I mentioned already, has found very useful to um, uh, to facilitate a, 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 an iPad implementation is to use Apple Configurator. 
Now, it seems to be that the best model so far is to have one Mac computer and then a cart uh, full of iPads and then syncing everything all together. But certainly using Apple Configurator seems to be the way to go uh, for transferring lots of apps onto multiple devices. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you the, um, uh, the slide for the volume purchase program, which has finally now come to other countries, not just the US, so Australia, the UK, et cetera. And so now there isn't a gray area, gray area about um, getting the correct uh, app license for individual apps. And just to make it clear, if people aren't aware, if you have a personal device and you, get a, you download an app, you can have it on five uh, personal devices, an iPad, an iPhone, an iPod Touch, and what have you. But in a school environment, it has to be one app per device. So the volume purchase program has absolutely clarified that and, and made that clear. And then, uh, so there's a couple of guides here, which I've given you a link uh, there for. Now, I've, made it, I've mentioned guided access uh, as well on the right-hand side here. This is a, a new feature which has come in in iOS 6. And uh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to lock down uh, one individual app, let's say, that you've got on your iPad uh, or, or on your iPhone or iPod Touch, but particularly looking at iPads today. Uh, which means that the, the students aren't, can't um, leave that app and then go and look at something else. So it means that they, you know, they can't be distracted. They have to focus on that one task, on that one app, which, um, which is a good thing in lots of ways. But then you could argue that for, uh, for workflow, in other words, um, working on a number of different apps to uh, produce a certain outcome, then that could be a hindrance. But anyway, the, the idea of guided access is uh, to lock down a certain app. So that's all you will, you, all you will access. And also, and my understanding is that you're actually able to screen off certain areas of the uh, of the app, uh, which means you can't have access to those areas as well within the one app or the one screen. So that's something else, uh, by all means, you know, have a look at. Uh, guided access is is a new feature in iOS 6, which uh, in the classroom context has lots of uh, possibilities. Also, maybe if you had your own iPad uh, and you had guided access on there, you could be uh, more comfortable about giving it out to the class so they could all have a look at it, as it were. Or, do a task on it, and knowing that they wouldn't be able to, you know, leave that app that they were looking at, and then go and have a look at your emails or whatever it might be. Okay, right. So this is the volume purchase program. So you've got the link um, underneath there if you want to check that out, and that's a very, very welcome thing uh, for schools who uh, who weren't exactly sure about, you know, the as I said, the great area about um, the number of. Uh, or getting getting the right to, you know license for the number of apps that they had on the, on multiple devices. Okay, this is a really interesting slide. I think this is from Eastbourne Academy uh, in the south uh, east of England, and um, uh, they've actually been lucky enough to get iPads for all the year seven, year eight, and year nine students. So that's 11, uh, year, 11 12 year olds, 12, 13 year olds, and 13 to 14 year olds have an iPad at this school at this academy. Um, which is absolutely wonderful. I actually did a, a, a half a day's training there with the languages department recently. And um, this uh, slide indicates some, some rules that they put together, or I rules, on the best use of iPads um, according to, you know, I must, I accept. And it, and it goes on and on and on, this PDF guide. And I think that's really useful. I think the idea of, of establishing rules with classes on how, you know, to use the iPads. Uh, is something which is a very, very valuable thing to do, which is why I've put that slide there, so you can download that and, and check, <coughs> check that out and replicate it in your own, uh, in your own context. Okay. Now, what about uh, looking for apps? Now, I've mentioned this um, already uh, in relation to you know, asking your personal learning network, but I'd also suggest that using Twitter for searching for um, hashtags, such as um, EdApp, EdApps, iOS EdApps. I know that uh, the iOS EdApps was um, was sort of created by Tony Vincent, uh, who gets um, unsurprisingly mentioned once or twice in, in later on in the presentation. A slide to learn, uh, and then the iPad Ed. Uh, there were other ones as well, but uh, those are really good hashtags, I think, um, to not only find interesting apps to have a look at, or maybe if there's a, you know an app which is free for the day or whatever, um, then that's a really really good uh, a good place to start. But it's also a good place to connect with other teachers who are interested in this whole area. Um, for example, I noticed that I think it's today Doodlecast Pro, which is a screencasting app, is free for today. So if you haven't got that on your iPad, I'd really encourage you to have a look at that. Doodlecast Pro uh, is very cool. And on the right-hand side, uh, you've got tools and apps. So LiveBinder, we already know about LiveBinder. Uh, that's what Peggy's used to put um, all the links together all in one, the one place. 
uh, scoop it or scoop.it is also very useful for um, uh, for uh, curating links. Um, they, they, I always think about there's sort of three Johns who are really good at um, uh, putting scoop it's for iPads. One is um, John Pierce uh, from Australia, John um, Samuelson or iPad Sammy and John Evans. So the three Johns, definitely check those out. Uh, they've got some fantastic Scoop It iPad uh, curated um, uh, 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 created examples of, uh, of of bringing all these different links to do with iPads all together. YouTube is is fantastic for um, how to guides on on iPads, I, uh, iPad apps, either uh, for um, ones that have been created by the the person that made the app or the company that made the app or individuals in their front room, let's say, or the lounge, saying, oh, I've just discovered this really cool app, look, it does this. Um, also, actually, in general, for sort of iPad tips and tricks, there's some fantastic YouTube clips there as well. And then finally, uh, TweetBot, which if you don't know, is a Twitter client uh, for the iPad and the iPod, iPod Touch iPhone. I find that a really, really useful Twitter client. It's not free, but it's well worth well worth the money. And there you can favorite things very easily. Uh, you can create lists maybe of people who you know are into uh, things to do with iPads. And so you can check that. You can, you can save searches. You can check, let's say, every day on uh, who's been tweeting using the iOS Ed apps app, for example. And, and likewise, um, uh, with TweetDeck, you can do the same thing. But I would use TweetDeck on the PC or the Mac. And I'd use TweetBot on the, on the iPad or the iPod Touch personally. I'd really strongly recommend those ones. They're, they're great. OK. Uh, now, in February last year, uh, there was a, a UK Ed Chat. Those people that aren't aware of, of how the UK Ed Chat works, it's just like any, any chat. You have the hashtag in your tweet, and then you're able to follow threaded conversations. So the one in February of last year was uh, mobile devices and apps. And there, there was a real you know, treasure trove in that um, a digest of the conversation for you, check, for you to check out, not only uh, about apps, but also to follow to get an indication of people you, you would like to follow uh, who are also into this sort of thing, as I mentioned already. So Twitter is really fantastic for that. And obviously, it's, it's, it's apps which have been recommended by practicing teachers in their classrooms, probably who are on the cutting edge of uh, this whole area, which is just wonderful. OK, um, there was um, a Teach Meet uh, recently in, uh, in November, October. November it was, November uh, last year. And uh, I wasn't able to go, unfortunately, uh, because I was, uh, had to have my appendix out, of all things. So I had to, uh, I was still convalescing at that point. So I wasn't able to go, but I did create a video uh, talking about using WAPWOLF, which is a free service which creates um, an automated folder in your Box account or your Dropbox account or, or other cloud services, which allows, for example, it, it will do various things, but it, what's the one thing it does really, really well is it will take any audio file you put into that folder and convert it to MP3. So I find that really, really useful from the point of view that there are lots of apps out there for recording and editing sound or just uh, recording sound. But they all tend to record in different formats, such as uh, CAF or MP4A or whatever it might be. And using WAPWOLF, using, having a look at that presentation that I made for the Teach Me iPad uh, event, you can find out how you can um, easily uh, convert it to MP3. So uh, this I uh, iPad uh, Teach Me iPad event, it's um, uh, two and a half hours or so uh, live uh, recorded on Ustream. And you can check out uh, that in your own time by clicking on the link at the bottom of, of that particular slide. Uh, and it's really, really fantastic, well worth having a look at. Again, uh, teachers from uh, sort of the London area talking about how they're using iPads in, in the classroom. I'd really recommend you to do a similar thing in, in, your, own, uh, in your own context. Really fantastic resource. And it was organized by Anthony Evans. And you can see uh, he's uh, just down there. He's Skinny Boy Evans on Twitter. And uh, he's a big fan of iPads. And uh, he was the one that, that, that put the whole event together. So uh, well done, uh, Anthony. OK, uh, this was um, one of the uh, interesting ways uh, um, uh, series um, example of um, uh, using iPads in the classroom. So there's, this is a great resource for some interesting ways of using iPads, some really great app uh, suggestions. This is curated by Tom Barrett, those people that aren't aware of, of his interesting ways series and uh, populated by uh, people from all over the world who are interested in iPads. So again, there's some absolutely stonking ideas there and, uh, of uh, how to use um, iPads in the classroom. OK, um, Tech Talk Tuesdays is a really good um, 
series for for webinars. Um, Jenny Ashby, who is an absolutely leading person in this whole field, uh, from um, uh, Bendigo in in, Aust uh, in Australia, she did a, a Tech Talk Tuesday webinar on iPads in June. Um, I did one in uh, October, I think it was October last year, uh, similar to this presentation. Although I've updated it quite a lot with all the new stuff that's been coming through. Uh, and you can, again, check all the, these different webinars out. Uh, there's also some really nice webinars for the Simple K12 series on the use of iPads as well. So there's lots of things out there to, 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 to um, have a look at. OK, uh, for those people who maybe don't uh, know, know where to start, who are maybe newbies that have just got an iPad, then if you have a look at this link, it will take you to um, a, a, a huge uh, resource suggesting different apps for different curriculum areas. So that can be a good place to start. I, I'm not certainly not checked out all these apps. I'm not recommending any of them. But there are some that I know that, that, that are really good. So if you're not really sure where to start, that could be a good starting point to have a look at. OK, now these are some of my personal favorites, some killer apps. Uh, for those people that aren't aware of all of these, I'll just go, go through them very quickly. So we've got Pages here, which is a bit like uh, Word, as it were. We've got Keynote, a bit like PowerPoint. Uh, iMovie, which is brilliant um, for accessing that re redefinition um, level of the Salmon model. Uh, I can animate. Uh, animation, brilliant on the iPad, absolutely fantastic. You don't have to bother with any other kit. You've got it all there on the one device. This is called My Story, a Bookmaker for Kids. Brilliant um, uh, app for creating ebooks with personalized uh, hand drawn drawings from the students, or they can insert digital, or, uh, digital video as well, and they, and they can record a voiceover as well over the top. Uh, you've then got Book Creator, which is again an awesome um, book, uh, 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 app for creating ebooks. Um, and you can do similar things to the My Book app, but you can also, uh, My Story app, sorry, but you can also add video as well. You've then got Comic Life, great for making cartoons. There are lots of apps out there for making comics. There's also Strip Designer as well, but Comic Life is probably my favorite one. Um, now, here you've got the, um, can you, sorry, can you actually see the pointer? Oh, sorry, if I click on this one, ah, can you see the pointer now? Can you see the pointer now? Ah, brilliant, okay. Uh, okay, so this one now is explained everything. Uh, there are lots of screencasting apps out there. This is probably the best one. It's not free, but it's certainly worth uh, having a look at. And it's got lots and lots of different export um, functions. Uh, the one here, this is um, called Recorder HD Plus. Uh, there are some free apps out there like HokuSai, H-O-K-U-S-A-I, HokuSai, for recording editing sound. It's this, uh, that's the most similar app to Audacity that I found. But I actually prefer this one, to be honest. Uh, because of the fact that um, with Recorder HD Plus, uh, the editing is just lovely. It just works in a really smooth way. It's also very stable as well, whereas sometimes I find hockey size not particularly stable. Uh, and you have to uh, keep pressing uh, My Documents, which is the save uh, function. And uh, that's, uh, that's fine. Hopefully, you can still see the, the pointer. Maybe not. Um, OK. Uh, the one to the, the right of that is called, and uh, it's got a very strange name. It's called I Said What. Uh, which is um, a, a very cheap app which allows you to not only record audio and edit it, but it also gives you the function of adding a, um, a transcript. So you can write a transcript or paste the transcript in and then record your audio, which is really, really nice. The one to the right of that is one which I came across literally in the last week or so. And I just think it's awesome. It's called um, uh, Boss Jock uh, Studio. And it allows you to make a podcast instantly uh, with embedded sound effects and other, other features, and then export it as MP3. Uh, and if you subscribe to Boo Mail, which is the um, email export, export uh, tool for um, Audio Boo, you can then send it straight to Audio Boo using that uh, email attachment function. So that's called Boss Studio, uh, sorry, Boss Jock Studio, and it's brilliant. Now, to the right of that, you've got Puppet Pals, which I'm sure a lot of you know about. This is um, uh, a way of creating a, an animation with your own images and recording audio over the top with your own backgrounds as well. That's really, really cool. So let's just go down one. Um, so you've got this sort of television type um, image there with the, the various lines coming off it. This one you may not be aware of. I don't think lots of people know about this one. It's called Icon It. So that's E-Y-E-C-O-N-I-T. And this one, I think, is genius because it allows you to, if you, let's say, you just have an image of an app, you can scan it with this particular app, and it will tell you what the app is. 
So without any words or anything, it will just work out. It will, it will recognize the image, hopefully. It doesn't do it 100% all the time, but if the image is clear, it should have a good job of being able to tell you what the app is just by scanning the, um, the thumbnail. To the left of that, you've got um, uh, documents uh, to go. Premium. Um, you could have a look at Cloud On. Cloud On is nice for creating um, Office documents and, and, and editing Office documents, uh, which is free. But I actually prefer this one, to be honest, which has um, a Dropbox um, uh, uh, backup as well. And it allows you to edit and create um, Office documents. To the left of that, you've got Skitch. Uh, which if you just have the one iPad in the classroom, then you could use that for annotating images and, and use it like an interactive whiteboard if you like. That's great. To the left of that, um, this, is, um, this is an app which is a whiteboard app similar to, to Doodle Buddy, but I actually prefer this one. It's called Byboard, which is B-A-I-B-O-A-R-D, Byboard HD. And not only can you collaborate with other people as you can with Doodle Buddy, you can also um, mirror what's on your iPad um, onto any browser as well on your on your PC on your on your Mac whatever and so that's a really really nice one you can do things like text chat as well or even do a, a voice chat using that app so and it's free which is just great uh, to the left of that you've got Posturus so a, a blogging a blogging app uh, great way of getting content off the iPad and onto the World Wide Web. I know that Posturus maybe is going to be shutting down. We don't actually know that yet, but um, it's not looking good for Posturus. But at the moment, it's certainly a, a killer app for the iPad. Uh, to the left of that, you've got Photo Card. If you want to create uh, a, a, an e-card on the iPad and embed audio with that and then send it as an email attachment to your, to your teacher, that's brilliant. You can also send it to Posturus and it will embed automatically with its image and then with uh, an embedded um, audio file underneath. Really, really nice tool. Um, underneath that one is called iFiles. Uh, and this is probably my favorite app for file management. It's absolutely brilliant from the point of view of being able to get stuff onto the iPad, off the iPad, uh, um, between apps. It's just It just gets me out of so many diff difficulties. It's just wonderful. If there's any app that you should have on your iPad, it's iFiles for file management. Um, to, the, to the right of that one, this one's called Dropler, which is D-R-O-P-L-R, -R, which you may not be aware of, Dropler. Uh, and that's a really great um, app, and it's also a desktop tool as well. What it allows you to do, it allows you to upload to your Dropler account. I think you can have one gig for free. And it copies automatically the, uh, the, the, uh, the URL uh, on your Dropler account to the clipboard. So it's wonderful for creating QR codes. So for example, you wanted to quickly transfer something from your iPad to your uh, PC or to other people you wanted to tweet this URL out onto Twitter or, 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 or um, create a QR code and put that onto Twitter, for example then Dropler is just a great way to do that. Uh, to the right of that is, is Dropbox, which I'm sure we're all aware of. Um, I don't need to say a lot about that, I'm sure. If you've got an iPad, it's an essential app. To the right of that one is Socrative, which is a free classroom voting uh, tool. It will work not only on the iPad via the app, but also uh, via any internet browser. It will work on any tablet, any PC, any laptop. Uh, absolutely fantastic, and it's free. So well worth having a look at. To the right of that one is called iNigma, and that's a really nice app for uh, reading QR codes. It's, it's the app which is, uh, does it the quickest, in my opinion, and it's just wonderful. It's called iNigma. It works on iPads, iOS, and also on Android as well. And then to the right of that, you've got Evernote, which lots of teachers rave about uh, for uh, things like um, uh, planning or maybe uh, taking photographs of children's work and getting it straight onto the uh, interactive whiteboard uh, via the, uh, the Evernote app. So again, a really, really cool tool. Now, if we go on to the next slide, what I've done is I've done a Wordle of uh, uh, the, all those apps. Uh, I think I did actually mi miss off Iconit, but apart from that, they're all there, uh, plus some other ones which I also really, really like. So you can have a look at that in your own time. But these are certainly some of my faves at the moment. I'm sure it will change in the future. OK. Um, now, uh, Chris Smith, a shambles guru, I believe still in the room. Um, this is a brilliant, brilliant, and he's not paying me to say this. I'm just saying this because I really like it. Uh, this is a brilliant uh, book, e-book, all about um, cool apps to use in the classroom. It's called An Educator's iPad. Uh, I read it on, uh, when I was in Australia on various um, plane journeys, recommended uh, it to lots of people, and uh, I would you know, encourage you to do the same. It's really brilliant. 
starting point, well, not just starting point, but something to explore. Lots of different apps there um, by Shambles Guru uh, uh, that you can use on the iPad. So uh, an absolute find. I know that um, Wes Fryer's um, playing with digital media is also uh, supposed to be very, very good as well. I haven't had a chance to actually look at that myself, but I believe that's also very, very good as well, which is no surprise as we all know how amazing Wes is. And I believe he's just in the room, so I'm very, very flattered. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, I realize I've only got a few minutes to go, but I'm going to rush through uh, the next few slides quite quickly. This is uh, The next few slides are some sort of lesson ideas on iPad use across the, the curriculum. So this one was uh, created by um, an Apple's distinguished educator uh, called David Bohr. Uh, and uh, you can have a look at that. That's a download there. Uh, we've got some more I iPad lesson ideas. This one is creative iPad apps such as GarageBand, iMovie, and what have you. This is a guide created by RM Education in the UK, uh, giving some ideas on how you can uh, use iPads and workflows and those sorts of things in the classroom. Uh, here's a, 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 a download, a, a guide, iPads in the Classroom by Sabrina Huber. Uh, to the right of that is a really nice podcast created by um, uh, um, Jenny Ashby and Lois Medhurst, which uh, is, is brilliant and very sort of informal, but uh, they get down to the nitty gritty to do with different things to do with apps and iPads. So it's not just to do with that, but they certainly talk about that a lot, and I'd really encourage you to, to have a listen uh, to, to that podcast. Um, Sylvia Tolisano, who I've mentioned already, she's done this brilliant rubric for evaluating an app uh, in the classroom, uh, which is very, very detailed, so I'd, I'd really encourage you to have a look at that as well. Um, for those people who've just got the one iPad in the classroom, then this could be a, a good graphic to help you get started on the sorts of apps you can use for achieving certain tasks. If you've just got the one iPad, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, great uh, blog post by uh, Daniel Edwards, or uh, SciDead06, um, absolutely brilliant um, uh, tweeter to do with iPads, a tweeter and blogger. And uh, he's been very, very supportive to me the last year, as has Mark Anderson, ICT evangelist as well. And uh, well worth checking out his blog. That's a great um, post to do with, you know, if you've just got the one iPad in the classroom. Uh, so some of the apps that are recommended are, for example, Skitch and that sort of thing. But he's not only is he a, he's a prolific and fantastic blogger, he's also very helpful on Twitter. So just ask him a question, and I'll get back to you very quickly, I'm sure. Uh, okay. Uh, this is taken from Tony Vincent's uh, website. It is to do with iOS 5, but the, the, so obviously the latest um, operating system is iOS 6. But it's a really uh, nice idea to check out different um, uh, posts on iOS uh, 6 tips and tricks, because uh, you'll learn so much just by uh, having a look at that uh, sort of thing. I did actually start a podcast. Uh, I did about 50 episodes last year called an iPad Idea a Day Project. If you if you have a look, it's iPad. 366.postress.com, it's still there. But I, I ran out of steam, unfortunately, because I wasn't very well when I came back from Hong Kong, I had a cold, and then I got behind with work, blah, blah, blah. So I, I didn't actually carry, carry on with it. But I go over some of the tips and, tricks for, tips and tricks for newbies if you check out that podcast. But that's certainly a good idea to, to check out posts on tips and tricks. OK, uh, quickly now we're going to talk about um, different ways of, of uh, uh, collecting student work. So there's a really nice blog post here by um, uh, Miguel uh, uh, Guilan, uh, who's given some, some top ideas on how to distribute work or handwork in if you're a student. Uh, there's a post here to do with um, using iTunes for this. Uh, something which I sort of um, came up with, well, didn't actually came up with, got inspired by a post by David Bohr, I've mentioned already, of emailing content to a, a, bo a specific box folder. So in Box, you can uh, create a folder, and then you can create an email address just for that folder, which if you then put into your contacts, you can then email um, work, um, multimedia files, what have you, to your Box account. Uh, I go over all of this in my um, presentation for the uh, Teach Me iPad um, uh, MP3 plus Box, uh, sorry, Wackwolf plus Box equals MP3, and you can check out that in your own time. But that's a really nice workflow uh, possibility. More stuff to do with Edmodo, uh, which is, seems to be a killer app for the use of iPads for uh, file management. Um, so you've got here, you've got to, how to collect student uh, iPad creations with Edmodo. Uh, also referring to iOS 6 on Tony Vincent's site, how you can upload uh, uh, photos or videos from the camera roll to, um, uh, to the uh, Drop It To Me website. So Drop It To Me, you can create your own account. It will go into a folder in your Dropbox account, which is a nice way of handing in multimedia things like um, uh, videos or photos. 
You can annotate in, in Edmodo uh, as well, so that could be very useful for uh, use on the iPad. Um, again, this is a, a post by uh, Daniel Edwards where he talks about the idea of you know, the Edmodo being the iPad workflow solution, particularly in relation to the new feature in iOS 6, the open in another app feature, which I know a lot of people have been raving about. And, um, and uh, you'll see uh, here there's another post on the right hand side, iPads, Keynote and Edmodo, which goes over the whole uh, fantastic nature of this open in another app, which again for workflow uh, solutions, it's uh, absolutely brilliant. So again, something to have a look at in your own time. Uh, iBooks Author, um, uh, which is a Mac program which allows you to create really cool interactive um, uh, books for the iPad. And here are some, uh, this is a post by uh, Jose Picardo, who's head of languages at Nottingham High School in the UK, uh, who's using uh, iBooks Author to create um, resources for his sixth form, so students who are sort of 16 to 18 years old. And on the right hand side, there's a complete guide on how to use uh, iBooks Author, so it's definitely something worth having a look at as well. Uh, if you're trying to uh, project your iPad uh, onto a screen, there are various ways of doing that using Apple TV, using uh, this little uh, uh, device called a, a Canex ATV Pro, which I shipped in from the US, which I wanted to have a look at. And that allows you to connect a VGA projector to your iPad using Apple TV. You can go for the, um, the wired uh, VGA adapter solution, but on the right hand side, uh, Tony Vincent again has put together this really useful table. Uh, going over the different options, also the software option of using Air Server or Reflector, uh, previous, previously known as Reflection, uh, another you know a great way of mirroring what you've got on your iPad via AirPlay onto the screen. So you, you can have a hardware solution or a software solution. Okay, uh, QR codes in the in education. QR codes are fantastic for uh, use on iPads. Uh, here I want to direct you towards again Kelda Richards, who I've mentioned already. Uh, she has created what she calls uh, the talking wall or le mur parlant and she is using QR codes with Orasma and created augmented reality uh, video clips which appear from the uh, visual prompts of um, the, um, the word art, for example the word football and what have you. And if you click on the, the first link there, uh, le mur parlant, then it will take you to um, a video clip and step by step instructions on how to do this. So a really nice way of making a talking wall for your classroom. Uh, the right hand side there at the top is a presentation I made um, uh, last, uh, sorry not last year, in 2011 on the use of uh, QR codes in the classroom, so lots of ideas there, it's only seven minutes long as well. And underneath uh, is a picture I took uh, about work from uh, uh, Deputy Mitchell, David Mitchell from uh, Bolton, the founder of Quad Blogging, who I'm sure some of you have heard about, and um, he's uh, come up with the idea of making his exercise books 4D. In other words, taking uh, uh, a child's work, a piece of work that they've created uh, with just uh, pen and, and paper, he's marked it, he's then got them to do a blog post, he's then created a QR code, or he's got them to create a QR code of the blog post and then put it into their exercise book. So you've got the, um, the marked work then appearing on the, on the blog uh, and the opportunity of uh, other people leaving comments, peer assessment and what have you. So a really nice way of making your exercise books 4D, in other words making the link between the physical and the virtual. And again, there's a link to uh, how we did that at the bottom of that particular slide. Uh, another quick um, uh, talk about QR code in education. Uh, I had a chat on Twitter with a friend of mine, Alex Lagona, who uh, was getting the students to look at the perfect tense to do with French verbs. And he used the QR code to link to a YouTube clip made by another department uh, somewhere else in the country. And I thought that was great. But I, having been inspired by the work of, of Wesley Fryer and using Show Me with the iPad, I suggested that he created sort of a, a grammar explanation, in this case, of uh, this and that, so ce said si in French, which he created uh, on the, the app on the iPad. He uploaded it onto uh, the Show Me website using the Show Me app. And then he um, uh, created a QR code on my advice, uh, which he could then uh, put into the children's exercise book. And I actually write all about this um, uh, for The Guardian, uh, the um, board sheet newspaper. It's actually on the website, not on the, the paper copy. Uh, on the, if you've got the link underneath in November about how um, this is all put together. And you'll notice as well that there's an app underneath the um, Show Me app, which is called iCab Mobile which I'd really recommend for downloading YouTube clips or downloading any web clips. You can actually download the Show Me video that was made by um, Alex 
onto your um, iPad straight to the camera roll using iCab Mobile, which is just a wonderful way of of getting uh, web videos onto your iPad and then you know inserting them into Keynote or whatever. So just to finish off with, we have to be mindful of you know student expectation, <laughs> the fact that um, you know children are coming into our schools, into our uh, kindergartens, primary schools, secondary schools, expecting. Uh, there to be good Wi-Fi. Certainly, that's something which is absolutely essential for uh, an iPad rollout. And you know, so this graphic, you know, is saying, "How do you think my first day of kindergarten went?" They didn't even have Wi-Fi. So, in other words, the children of today, that you know, they have these very strong expectations. They they they're all trying to learn. Uh, they're all using their mobile devices to learn to surf the web and the rest of it. They expect when they come into the classroom, into the schools, not to have to power down, but to use these um use these devices. Uh, to, to, to access their learning and enhance their learning, and why not? Uh, and just to finish off with, this is a graphic from uh, Wes Fryer, which I just think is brilliant. What do you want to create today? In other words, very much focusing on the iPad as a, as a content creation tool. And he's got some lovely examples on how to put that together. And then on the right-hand side there, you've got um, a couple of slideshows from Sylvia Tolisano and her website on uh, different ideas and how to transform uh, your classroom with the use of the iPad. Uh, and here is a, a, a QR code uh, on queue. If you want to download this presentation, then you can download that by scanning that or just by uh, taking the URL and putting it into your browser and downloading it that way. This is from my public Dropbox. And, um, and that's what I wanted to say. So if I just go to the, the last slide, if that's OK, uh, this is my, my blog address here. This is my email address underneath. Uh, if you do want to get in contact with me, and uh, and you know, ask me to, to 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 travel to anywhere in the world and run a presentation or do some training on iPads or anything to do with uh, technology and and education. Then I would be very very delighted to accept any offers that may come in. Uh, I'm already have gone started to go international. I've been in the last year and a half. I've been to uh, Montreal, Australia, Hong Kong, uh, Europe, uh, all over. So if you'd like if you if you like what you've heard and you'd like to know more and you'd like to invite me to come along to to give a conference talk or do some training, I would love to hear from you. So just to finish off with, that, those are my contact details. And uh, I know I've gone slightly over time. I know it's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour, but I hope you found that very, very useful. And, and thank you for inviting me. Any questions? Um, I get a, jotted down a few questions. I know there are people who want to download the slides. And you can do so by going up to File in your toolbar, selecting Save. Save the whiteboard and save the group of whiteboards as uh, a PDF, and then you'll have access to the to the whiteboards. We will post the chat log later this weekend, so you'll have access to all of the links, and we will add the links into our live binder, as well as the existing links that are in there that um, that Joe has already shared with us, and that's the live binder links. Um, a few questions I jotted down is somebody mentioned uh, where which app was free today. I wasn't sure if you were talking about Doodlecast or Reflector. Right, that's a Doodlecast Pro is free uh, today. Well, it was certainly earlier on on Twitter. It was it was, uh, it was free. It's normally about um, three pounds, so say five dollars, but uh, it's it's free today apparently. So I would definitely snap that up if it is still free. Okay, and. Somebody also asked um, which of those apps is the one that you could use to create e-cards? Right, that's the, the, the one um, uh, on the right-hand side, uh, sorry, on the left-hand side, the third one from the uh, top or second one from the bottom, and it's called PhotoCard by Bill Atkinson. So if you do a search on iTunes for PhotoCard Bill Atkinson, that's AT. K I N S O Atkinson A T K I N S O N Bill Atkinson, and you'll find it. And uh, there's a free version, and then there's a paid-for version as well. Uh, I can't remember the difference, but you can certainly with the free version, you can create your postcard. It works beautifully on the iPad. Uh, you can do it in any language as well if you want to just change the language. That's another really good thing about the iPad: changing the language is easy. And you can also add what's called an audio note as well, which means that you can combine uh, speaking with writing, uh, which is just great. Okay, and I know that there are some more questions, but I'm going to go ahead and 
close out our session. Uh, we want to be mindful of your time, and I know that there was a lot shared. So be sure to uh, make sure that you check out the Live Binder link and that you click on that and you copy that down um, before you leave. You can click on the link directly in the chat right now, and it will open in your browser. That is the live link, uh, both in the chat and as well as um, in the chat log that we will have posted on our archives page, and I'll talk about that shortly. And we want to let you know um, that if you want to stick around afterwards, we'll take some more questions. But on January the 17th, Steve Hargadon will be interviewing Holly Epstein Ohavo and Esther on student journalism. He'll be talking with Gary Obermeyer on January 29th. And on the 31st, Stephen, I'm not even going to attempt these names. I totally apologize if I'm destroying them. So um, those are some great uh, interviews that Steve Hargadon is going to have coming up. They're all at 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern um, on those specific days. And you can find that on futureofeducation.com um, for his schedule. We want to let you know next week we're going to have a very wonderful session by Heidi um, talking about the way she uses technology. On the 26th, there, um, we will not have a show so that you can attend Educon or uh, I believe the dentist having PsyCon, some things that are going on online. And we don't want to interfere or take time away from those. So it goes. So be sure to check out Educon um, by Chad Lehman up in uh, Philly. It's fantastic, great sessions and conversations. We will have Alex Dunn talking more about iPads, but in a university, in part of the universal design for learning and the uh, that learning theory, um, another perspective on using iPads on February the second, and we'll have Matt Hardy and his teachers talking about Kid Blog on February the ninth. If you'd like to nominate a colleague or, or yourself that works with students and teachers for to be one of our featured teacher sessions, the form is, the survey link is or the form link is in the live binders. And you can also give us feedback on today's session by filling out the survey and the survey will automatically open once you exit today's session. You can also request a professional development certificate for today or any of the archives that you view using that survey link, and that's in the live binder link as well. Just put your name and email address, and Peggy will get that out to you. She takes care of that each week for us. We want to let you know we also have an iTunes U channel that you can subscribe to to get the MP3s and the MP4s of each of our sessions. You can also subscribe via an RSS feed to the blog post where we post all of the resources and recording links as well and get the information that way if you happen to miss a session or you want to review a session like today's session. I'm sure the recording uh, link count will be very high. And we want to extend a very special thanks to Joe for a great presentation today and to Steve Hargadon as well as to Weebly for our website and to each of you who have joined in today's session and conversation. We want to thank you so much. And we'll take uh, some more questions. And if you would um, like to stay around, we would appreciate that. If you have to go, we understand that as well. We do have uh, Joe's information um, so that you can contact him. If something comes up that um, you weren't able to stick around or the session didn't answer. And again, this is the live binder link. Um, make sure you get a copy of that as well. If you'd like to take the mic, we can uh, allow you to do that. Uh, we understand if you need to go. Uh, one of the other questions, um, oh no, those were all the questions that I found today. Uh, Lori, did you get down any questions that I might have missed or that were not answered during the session? Yes, I did, Kim. Uh, let me go look at my page again. Are you using the term iPad to refer to all tablets, or is the iPad something special among tablets? 
Um, no, when I'm talking about iPads, I'm talking about obviously specifically the iPad. Um, I mean, the iPad. W one could say that um, because ninety percent of the tablet market is the iPad, that it really is the iPad market, and uh, everything else is uh, really just trying to catch up in lots of ways. I'm, I'm, I don't work for Apple or, or, or anything like that. I, that's just my own independent view. Um, but what I'm referring to in this session, obviously, I'm focusing on the iPad. But there are certain things like Socrative and and other um, uh, things like Wapwolf as well, which will work on any uh, tablet device. But um, when I yeah, when I'm referring to iPads, I'm specifically referring to the iPad device, definitely. Thanks. Uh, does Apple Ecology mean the ability to sync iPads, iCloud, i iPad carts, etc.? Uh, did I say did I say Apple Ecology? Is that is that a term that I use? I don't. I'm I mean, not sure. It was okay, I I captured I the question from the chat. I don't I don't know if it was a term that you specifically used or not, Joe. Okay. Well, I would imagine if I did say that, I can't remember to be honest. But if I did say that, then obviously that would be to do with I suppose um, the whole idea of of well, this is certainly something that I found myself having used PCs for years and years and years. Suddenly. And I got my iPod Touch first of all, then an iPad. I haven't, I haven't got a Mac computer at all. But I felt that I had to learn new ways of doing things I knew how to do already uh, on the iPad, on the iPod Touch. And that was a challenge which I really enjoyed. I really relished, to be honest. So, and I've heard this from other people as well that there's sort of like an Apple way of doing things, and mm -hmm. that's something that you have to learn if you like. And so that's what I would, would if I, if I said that, which I'm, I'm not saying I didn't, but if I did say that, then I would say that certainly with Apple. Uh, uh, product that you know you need to think about things in an Apple way, um, which is is a challenge which I really enjoyed. Maybe it might put some people off, and I think that a mistake. I mean, I could have mentioned this earlier, but a mistake that some people make is they think that the iPad is is a laptop replacement, and if they can't do mm -hmm. everything they could do on a laptop on an iPad, they think it's a waste of time. Uh, there was an example given in one of the posts earlier that um, there was a teacher you know that said. Uh, that they who taught Latin and said, well, there aren't any apps for Latin. Actually, ironically, a couple of days ago, I found there were some apps that, that were good for Latin. But just because there aren't specific apps for specific you know subject areas doesn't mean that an iPad can't be wonderful in the hands of the right teacher and the right students, as it were. It's all about mm -hmm. um, uh, you know using apps to, uh, in my opinion, to create content rather than you know just looking, uh, for example, in languages, you know, just looking for ways of practicing um, receptively. There are some fantastic websites out there and what have you which maybe you can't access on an iPad because they use Flash or whatever. But you can you can do those in an ICT suite, use a, use laptops or use PCs or whatever. But I would say that the great thing about the iPad is for creating content and so that's something which I've picked up anyway in, in the last sort of year and a bit, certainly. And and the Apple ecology term is on one of the slides. That okay. Was asking about. No problem. Can you remind me which slide that was? Yeah. Let me see if I go back in the chat. Um, they said it was slide 12, but I didn't see it on slide 12. That doesn't slide mean that. 12. That's your slide 12. Okay. 12 seems to be ready for iPads. Oh. Oh, things for, to be ready. Okay, that was uh, to make your classroom iPad ready. I have to remember where this was now. Was it this one? Okay. Well, um, I'm not. I'm not sure to be honest. But any, anyway, I mean, as I've as I mentioned already, I presume that's what was meant by that. I'm not exactly sure which slide that is to be honest. But certainly, there's an Apple way of doing things. I would say, uh, and and we yeah. If we embrace iPads, we have to embrace everything about them, really, in, in lots of ways. We can't just think of them as just you know, a laptop replacement, because they're not, I think. Oh, right. The iPad Edge, that was to do with multiple intelligences, which is later on. Here we are. So that's the uh, iPadders.eu site. Uh, that is the reference to Gardner's multiple intelligences and, and the different apps that you have um, that relate to those different um, uh, criteria. Okay, great. And Hard, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Um, I gave you the mic, but it, yeah, I didn't. Okay.
Okay, were there any questions that um, we might have missed um, before we let everybody go for the day? If so, if you could uh, type it in the chat or if you'd like to use your mic, we can give you the uh, ability to use your mic. Just click on the hand, raise your hand, and then we will do so. And all of the links to the recordings will be posted on our website later this weekend. Um, that link is also in the live binders, and I'm also going to go ahead and post it in the chat for you as well. Uh, Grant, I would check out Grant Wrangler. Dot com. They have great information on writing grants, getting uh, grants that are coming up, due dates, and so forth. And um, Joe, what are some of your favorite apps for uh, audio recording? Uh, yeah, um, just that? before I answer, just before I answer that, um, I found the correct slide. Um, oh, oh, okay. I moved. apologize. That's okay. Um, which that's okay. Don't worry. Um, which was uh, in a, here we are. Uh, which was to this idea of Apple Ecology, so integrated with an Apple Ecology. I would imagine that is exactly uh, what I was just saying, that uh, it's this sort of ethos of doing things the Apple way. But if you have a look at that particular link, as I mentioned that when I was uh, presenting this particular slide, all these different um, criteria are all explained in detail on that particular um, web page. So have a look at that, and then you can see what they mean by Apple Ecology. But to me, it means you know doing things in an Apple way. Uh, just going back to um, the audio slide, uh, audio apps. Sorry, um, if I find the killer apps, um, so here we are. So the ones I'd, I'd really recommend at the moment uh, are uh, I said what, which has got a very strange, <laughs> very strange title for an app. So it's called I said what question mark exclamation mark, and uh, which is um, the one in the middle. He oh, okay, never mind. It's, I, I think the slides keep changing, but it's called I said what question mark, exclamation mark, and it allows you to record audio, um, edit out the bits that you want, which are called excerpts, uh, put them all together as one, uh, what's called an arrangement, and then you can export that out as a WAV file, which um, if you send it to um, uh, the, uh, the box folder I've talked about already using the email option, or I think you can upload it to Box as well via the app, then it will convert it into MP3, which is fantastic. But the killer feature with that particular app is you can add a script um, to, uh, to the app, which means you can then record the audio uh, reading the script. There's another app which I came across as well called uh, RecPad, R-E-C space P-A-D, which is mentioned on the next slide, RecPad. And that allows you to do the same thing, not only with audio, but also with video as well. So what you have to do is um, you have to open, uh, let's say, um, a page of document or some sort of text in uh, RecPad, and then it allows you to record um, the audio while reading the, uh, the text, likewise with video. So that's called RecPad. And then um, HockeySci, H-O-K-U-S-A-I, is an, is an app which I was a big fan of for a long time. I still really like it, but I, I must say it is a bit unstable. Uh, it's not actually included on the, it was included on the original slide, but I decided to remove it and, and put in um, a recorder HD plus instead, which I prefer, which I find is more stable. It's not free, that one, but it's only a couple of pounds, a couple of dollars, and it allows you to, it, it, it just is really nice. The editing features on it are really, really nice. And then once you've finished it, you can then open it up in something else, uh, such as the, the, the Boss Jock um, Studio app, which I mentioned already. Uh, uh, and I'm particularly uh, sort of talking to Wes, as it were, at the moment. So Wes, I'd really encourage you, if you haven't heard about that, have a look at uh, Boss Jock Studio. Fantastic for making instant podcasting or, or going on um, what uh, uh, an Apple Distinguished Educator said recently, going on small learning journeys, which I think, again, which is what the iPad is all about, going on small learning journeys. And that sort of app really helps you to do that. So, and you can add jingles and what have you from, um, you can import them from Dropbox, put your jingles in, and uh, put together a whole show with uh, what are called carts. So you just click the cart, and that will then play your sound effect or whatever. So I think for, for creating a, 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 an instant podcast is, is great. And the other nice thing about it is if you've got a, a bedding track, in other words, a track that plays all the time that you're speaking, it ducks automatically when you start to speak, when you hit the... Um, uh, the, the voice uh, record button, as it were, uh, similar to in, uh, how it works in GarageBand on the, on the Mac, but that's a really killer feature. I don't know of another app that allows you to do that. So it's it's not cheap. It's um, seven pounds in England, so that's probably about ten dollars or something. But it's really and fantastic. Which one was definitely. that, Joe? 
but um, it's called Boss Jock Studio. So B O S S J O C K uh, Studio, and they were um, uh, they were um, uh, exhibiting uh, in the last couple of days in the New Media uh, Expo uh, in the States, and um, yeah, I just think uh, I just think that's a really interesting app, definitely. Great, thank you. Ten bucks. That's what I figured about. Yeah. Awesome. Any this other has questions? Been so fantastic. <laughs> um, I don't think there have been any new questions coming in, so we'll go ahead and close out the session. Um, and of course, when you uh, review the session, and if you have questions for Joe, you can contact him on Twitter or at his blog. Um, there will be a recording of the session posted on our website, and that website is in the live binders. All of our information and where we post everything is listed there as well. So we want to thank you, everybody, for joining us today and sharing your links and apps and ideas in the chat. Be sure to join us next week when we have Heidi uh, Siwek, I believe it's pronounced, Siwek. Um, talking about the way she uses technology in the classroom for our feature teacher session um, for January. So be sure to join us at the same time next week, and then we will be off on the 26th. So have a great Saturday and a great weekend, everybody. Hope to see you online and see you next week. Take care, everybody. And I just want to finish off by saying thanks ever so much uh, to the Live Classroom 2.0 for inviting me on. I'm very, very flattered, and it's fantastic to actually lead a session rather than just uh, be a delegate. Uh, so thanks again. I'm, I'm really delighted. Thank you.